Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. Joining me for our discussion tonight is Minister Gwendolyn Holmes, uh, my beautiful wife and the First Lady of Emmanuel Community Church. It's always a pleasure to have you, Minister Gwen. And it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. By way of introduction, welcome. we are continuing tonight our new teaching series called The Holy Spirit and His Works. The Holy Spirit and his works. Let us do a brief review of the past two lessons before we began tonight. In lesson one of this new series, uh, we discussed the person of the Holy Spirit, where we found out who he is. Mm -hmm. We discovered that he is God, mm -hmm. that he is the third person of the Holy Trinity, the third person of what's commonly known as the Godhead. That was lesson one. In lesson yeah. two, once we found out who the Holy Spirit is, we discussed receiving the Holy Spirit as believers. Uh, but receiving the Holy Spirit is interchangeable with the idea of being born of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We saw that each believer received the Holy Spirit or is born of the Holy Spirit at the point of salvation. Our topic of discussion this time is going to be being filled with the Spirit, which differs than being from being born of the Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. In our last presentation, we saw that being born of the Spirit results in salvation. Once someone accepts Jesus Christ as Savior, repents of their sin, does the prayer, uh, uh, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. The Holy Spirit does a miracle of the spirit, a miracle of the heart. That person is saved. That person is then born of the spirit. All right? In this presentation, we will see that being filled with the spirit results in sanctification. Now listen to the terms. Being born of the spirit results in salvation. Being filled with the spirit results in sanctification. So what is sanctification? Sanctification means practical righteousness. Once a person receives salvation, mm -hmm. they are positionally righteous. Yes. Colossians chapter one says they've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. From Satan's domain in the Christ domain, they have changed positions spiritually. Yes. They were in Satan's army, now they're in the army of the Lord. That is salvation that happens at the point of confession in Christ and acceptance of Jesus Christ as Savior. So that's salvation, all right? All right, but sanctification is not positional righteousness like salvation. Yes. It is practical righteousness. Mm -hmm. Get the terms. I want you to understand this. And I want everybody to know the difference between salvation and sanctification. Once you get saved, salvation gives you positionally, you're positionally right with God. Yes. You're in a right relationship with God. We call that positional righteousness. All right? But you're still not sanctified. Okay. Sanctification deals with lifestyle. Wow. Sanctification is a growing process, as we'll talk about here tonight. So... We will see that being filled with the Spirit. Actually, there's a scripture we always quote, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. In the Greek construction, it's be being filled. It's a continuous idea. We're continually being filled with the Spirit. And we'll talk about that in contrast to what some people think, that you get saved and some believe, you speak in tongues, you're filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. No, uh, it's, speaking in tongues does not mean that you are sanctified. It's an experience. And we'll talk about that a little as we go. So, tonight, sanctification, being filled with the Spirit, practical righteousness, which is holy living. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, Minister Gwen, there's some things we want to talk about, yeah. and I want you to comment on them. We have some notes here. Please talk about these things before we get into our lesson. Okay. There's much discussion and much confusion about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. A lot of confusion. There are three occasions in the book of Acts where people spoke in tongues. Yes. When they received the Holy Spirit. True. Throughout the book of Acts, thousands of others were saved by believing in Jesus with nothing said about speaking in tongues. That's true also. Nowhere in the New Testament right. does it say that speaking in tongues is the only evidence that a person has received the Holy Spirit. Right. The Apostle Paul wrote that all believers do not speak with tongues. 1 Corinthians 12, 29 through 31 reads like this. It's the Apostle Paul. He says, all are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not agree. All do not have gifts of healings, do they? Mm. All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I show you a still still a more excellent way. Yes. Now, the, the issue here being that, first of all, this is a type of rhetoric that Paul is using uh, to show it's, it's a, a question that doesn't really require a choice of answers. Right. The Total. only answer right. is no. Oh. Right. to every single question right. here. Right. All do not speak in tongues. All do not have the gifts of healing. Right. All are not apostles. Right. And what he was saying is you can't um, exclusively exclude or seclude people saying because you don't have this gift, you know, God's power isn't on you right. because you should be able to do all of these things. Right. And so. Paul's argument was, no, this is not true. And he just goes through a scenario of many of the gifts. And interesting enough, he talks about the gift of speaking in tongues. Yes. And he says, all do not have it. God does not need you to speak in tongues to evidence his Holy Spirit. No, no. And, and, and Minister, I don't yes. want to interrupt you. It's but, okay. Uh, there are denominations, mm -hmm. yes. mainly um, those without scholarship, mm -hmm. that's made uh, speaking in tongues a central doctrine right. of their faith. They made not only water baptism, central to salvation, but they've made a certain formula right. in water baptism central right. to their faith. Yes. First of all, you can be saved without being baptized. Yes. But you are supposed to be baptized after you're saved. It's a works. Right. And by no works shall anyone be saved. Baptism is an act of obedience of a saved right. person to identify with the one who died and was buried and to symbolize bearing the old nature, the old man, and rising out of the grave, walking in newness of life. It's all symbolic. It's all identification. So baptism doesn't save you. Mm -hmm. Tongues doesn't indicate that you are saved. I'm sure Satan has some counterfeit tongues. Uh, and some of people course. who are not saved. Whatever God did right, he did wrong. You got Buddhist monks and all kind of pagan religions with babbling and stuff going on. Doesn't mean they're saved. Mm -hmm. So uh, 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 some, and, and the people in these denominations, I mean, there are members in our church who've been confronted. Did you speak in tongues after you were saved? Well, no. Well, you're not saved. You got to go speak in tongues. That is not biblical. But they are part of this dogmatic teaching in unlearned organizations and churches without theology. And they are made to believe you have to speak in tongues to be saved. Paul clearly says that's not true. Yeah. There are many people saved in the New Testament that didn't speak in tongues. 
The three times you talked about in the book of Acts where people spoke in tongues. I want to talk about this because it's so confusing. And so many people uh, hem people up. I mean, you know, I, one of our brothers here plays basketball. And he was playing basketball with a minister. And this minister just was riding him about, you got to speak in tongues. You got to speak in tongues. And so this guy's kind of a scholar himself, I, I remember. So he was challenging this guy. And the guy never could come up with some concrete biblical evidence to prove that you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. They spoke in tongues in the upper room as evidence of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. two, on two other occasions in the book of Acts, Acts 9, 4 and Acts 10, 44, with Gentiles, God let the Gentiles speak in tongues so the Jews couldn't say they didn't have the same thing they had. But in many other on many other occasions, people were saved, but those are the only three times, Acts 2, 4, 10, 44, and, 9, and 19, 4, where they spoke in tongues when they got saved. God validated it in the Gentiles twice after he gave it to the Jews once. Everybody didn't speak in tongues, mm -hmm. and everybody doesn't have to speak in tongues today. There's a whole lot of confusion on that, and I, you said much discussion and much confusion, and I'm here to clear it up. And I want anybody out there that disagrees, write us, call us. I dare you to give me an opportunity to take you to the scripture and show you occasions where people were saved and they did not speak in tongues. All over the book of Acts. Just read the book of Acts. It's there for you. Well. Pastor, I, I just like to get real practical yes, if I can. Please. And if uh, in Acts 1 8, it says, You shall receive power yes. after yes. the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right. So if you if it if the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for power, what's the power needed for? Right. Practically, yeah. the power is so that you can live in this evil, which we'll get to. Yes, yes. And depraved earth. Yes. Okay. Against the forces of evil. Right. Which this is Satan's domain. Right. Okay. How are you going to combat? How are you going to uh, 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 be successful yes. against those kind of spiritual forces? Yes, good. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Without a spirit, the Holy Spirit, having power that is more powerful than that. Right. And the rest of that verse, you're quoting Acts 1 8. Yes. And you shall, once the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall you be, sh you shall be witnesses. witnesses. You have the strength to live. You have the strength. As a, in a way to let your life witness. Mm -hmm. And you have the ability, anointed by the Spirit, to talk to people about spirituality and, and let some of that living water flow out of you that we got in our lesson tonight. Absolutely. We're, we're going to get there. We're going to get some living right, water. But it right. can't flow out of you if you don't have the spirit in there with the teachings of Christ of being anointed by the Holy Spirit to flow out of you. So go ahead, minister. You're doing good teaching. I'm just helping out. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I'm just saying I look for the basics, yes. the practical. Yes. And it is so practical. You shall be filled with power to be a witness. Right. That's what it's for. Yeah. It's not to argue no. with your neighbor. It's not to argue with another Christian. It's not to argue with someone else that doesn't even profess Christianity. It, it, it's so amazing how confusing that issue is. And I find that the less academic or less theological a church is, or the less yeah. theological a denomination is, yeah. the more dogma they have. Dogma, in my layman's opinion, or layman's definition, is holding a strong opinion without evidence. Yes. And, yes. and, and, and uh, sometimes the less they know, the more they hold on to what they think they don't, what they think they know that's in error. So uh, that's enough on that. But I just want people to know if you have any questions about being filled with the spirit, please write us. We'll write you back. Call us. We'll call you back. Please don't be confused. You can go to heaven just at believing on Jesus alone. Salvation is Jesus Christ accepting him, accepting what he did, repenting of your sins, turning right and keeping straight. Plus nothing, minus nothing. Baptism is a works. You're saved before you got, ba get baptized. You can get the tongues to experience it if you want it, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I've had it. It didn't do anything supernaturally for me when I got it. It was just as hard to live right after as it was before. I had the Holy Spirit already in me, making me do everything they told me, including go up to the upper room and repeat a phrase until I almost choked, until I spoke in tongues. I think God rescued me and let me speak so they wouldn't kill me in that upper room. Right. But anyway, there's a lot of nonsense about this. And, and you know, Pastor, we talked about this. We yes. talked about the Apostle Paul, yes. who in one place he says, 
oh, you guys are arguing about tongues. I spoke in tongues more than you all. Or he said, I speak. Yeah. But nobody heard him speak. And there was no evidence that, there he, was, that, that he got saved. When he got saved on the Damascus Road, and when he went right. down to the house, uh, uh, when, uh, what's the man's name? Ananias. Ananias, yes. There's no evidence that when his eyes opened, there's no evidence he spoke in tongues when he first got saved. But he, it, it, there is evidence he started witnessing. There is evidence he started. So the spirit entered his life and he started witnessing after Ananias came and prayed for him and the scales fell off his eyes and he said, now I see. Oh yeah, he saw physically, but he also saw spiritually. And he was able to preach the gospel right away. And, had, and we don't have evidence that he spoke in tongues before that. Oops. Oops. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Bible, is, it, it, the Bible is, all the information practical. is there. We just got to get, we got the, the lack of scholarship in certain communities. The lack of scholarship, scholarship in certain churches and pulpits have led people into error in what they believe. Now, here's the thing. I don't argue with people who say that. Got to speak in tongues to be saved. Okay, thank you. God bless you. They can go to heaven believing that. I can go, I can go to heaven knowing that ain't true. Yeah. So they have heaven made. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't fight with people. You don't have to. You don't have to fight with but, them. But that, excuse me, yes, Pastor, no, no, no. That, that really is a contradiction yeah. of Romans 8, 9, and 10 that says if you believe in your heart and confess, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. thou shall be saved, period. There's nothing in there about tongues. Nothing thou in, shall be saved. It nothing. doesn't say if you get baptized. If you if speak in tongues. If you speak in tongues, if you sing a spiritual song, if you do a dance, it doesn't say if anything else. If the house shakes and quakes, none of that. No. Just believe, accept Christ, repent of your sins, confess him and you're saved. Mm -hmm. It's too easy. Folks like to feel like they did something to help themselves get yes. saved. Yes. So they go out yes. and create works they got to do. I've done my work, now I'm saved. We don't need to help God save us. Just submit to him. He'll save us. Just it's submit. his plan. It's it, his plan. It's his plan. Don't try to improve on the plan. <laughs> to get to him. We yes. always want to modify stuff. And, and learn how to just be content with what God said. Amen. What Amen. God says. Preach, sister. That's it. All I'm right. done. <laughs> Can I go now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, my turn. <laughs> Christ promised that the Holy Spirit would be sent as a comforter. Yes. And as a helper, mm. and that help includes the strength that he promised over in Acts 1 8 to be witness. He will comfort us. The, the yes. Greek term is paraclete. Yes. One called alongside you to aid, to help, to assist you. Oh, God told me to say this. He told me twice today to say it. Can I say it right now? Say it. Say what God said. Say. <laughs> the, the person you should know better than you know anybody else is the person of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Oh, I know myself. I know my husband. I know my wife. You better get to know God better than you know all of those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The person of the Holy Spirit should be who you are striving to know. And, and you know, people watching this, this is not as exciting as the gifts. Uh, this is not as exciting as faith. This is not exciting. But getting to know the Holy Spirit, getting to know God, and learning how to interface with him and have his help in your life is one of the most significant things in the whole wide world. And we talked about it a little last week and got it, last time rather, and got excited. We talked about practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And since that, I've been doing that. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge your presence right now and I need you right now. I'm talking to him in the car. I'm talking to him in the bed. I'm talking to him at home. I acknowledge his presence and that will guide your life. He comforts you. He helps you. He assures you. May I read the scripture? Yes. Okay. St. John 14, 16. King James Version. I went to King James on this one. Okay. I wanted that word comforter. Okay. And I will pray the Father. Jesus is telling his disciples before he goes, before he goes back to glory. He says, and I will pray the Father. Uh, he shall give you another comforter. That he, meaning the comforter. Yes. May abide with you Forever. Forever. Once we receive Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. he, he births us into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We have him forever. He's not only with us, he's in us, and he's for us. we got to get to know him better. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right? Each believer has within them the promised Holy Spirit. Each believer, without speaking in tongues, has within them the promised Holy Spirit and should be guided by him. Wow. Should be guided by him and not by the flesh. Not guided by our carnality. That's what flesh means. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 9 mm -hmm. says this. You don't deny, once you're saved, you're still 
are in a fleshly body. Listen to what this says. However, you are not in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You still have flesh, but you're not living by the flesh is what that means. Yes. But in the spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. We yield to him and not yield to our cravings of the, right. car of the carnal nature. Mm -hmm. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Huh. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not, does not belong to him. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. The spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, it's all one. Right. They, he dwells in us. Absolutely. So Absolutely. everybody has the spirit without speaking in tongues, without doing works righteousness, without baptism, which is a work, an action. Right. By no works of the flesh shall we be saved. Baptism mm -hmm. is a work. It doesn't save you. We are saved by faith, we're told in Ephesians, I believe, 2, 8. By grace two through faith. Eight. By grace. Through faith. Through faith. It and, is the gift of God. And faith is, I believe what God says. And I've acted on it. And I will act on it yeah. and make my decisions, guide my life, settle my life based on what God says. So you're saying acknowledge yes. the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That takes faith. It does. That's not something you're used to. Right. So it sounds easier and better and more natural okay. for someone else to say, well, do this. No. Just that, that's evident. But just believe this. But God says believe. Saved uh, uh, by faith, by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Grace is he gives you something, salvation, mm -hmm. that you don't deserve just for believing, not working. For believing, not working. Just for working. believing. Absolutely. Wow. And, and so you have to do the same thing, as you say, to practice the presence or practice acknowledging the Holy Spirit. So when I get, got saved, yes. 19 years old, yes. as a young woman, and they said, okay, you need to live by the Holy Spirit, the little church I was yes, in. Yes, they yes. taught on the Holy Spirit, and this was power that I had within me. Yes. And they showed it to me in the scripture. So right. then... I begin to say, Holy Spirit, you're there. Holy Spirit, lead me. Yes. Holy Spirit, guide That's me. That's acknowledging his presence. That is acknowledging his presence, and that is acting on the faith. I believe that you are there. I believe you are within me, Lord God, because your word tells me that. Yes, yes. And so I'm going to act like you, you're with me. And so, really, you're trusting God because you could go out and feel like and discover he's not there. Right. But if you're going to trust him, yeah. then you're going to have to put yourself in the place to find out if he's there or not. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Help me quote it. Now faith is. Faith is. Um, the evidence. The evidence. Yes. I'm sorry. Drew Blake. Okay. Yes. Of things hoped for. Of things for. hoped for. And I think no. we got a little backward. Yes. Faith. Yeah. <laughs> be evidence bad. of things not seen. Not seen. So in other, words, in other words, what we're trying to say, Hebrews 1 says, faith is almost feeling it tangibly, although you don't have it tangibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance mm -hmm. of things hoped for. Hoped for. And the evidence of things I do not yet see. Exactly. I believe I'm going to be all right because I'm trusting God. I don't know how, mm -hmm. but I believe he'll meet my needs. Right. Faith before I have evidence of how. And, that, and that's really all through your Christian yeah. life. That is part of your sanctification. Yes. Is believing things that you don't see and trusting God to uh, make it manifest in his time. You got to wait on God's timing. Wow. That still takes wow. faith. And the Holy Spirit is the one that helps you wait. Wow. He's comforting you while you wait. Waiting is hard sometimes. Waiting is hard. Waiting and still believing when you don't see anything. That's right. But we don't, we don't wait very well for anything. We don't wait for return phone calls, texts, <laughs> emails. We live in an instant society. We Everything want an instant God. is get it now. Yeah. We can't microwave blessings, can we? No. You got to wait until God says they're done. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. Let, let, let's move on here. Now, we, let's see. What's next here? Believers are to be yielded to the influence. Wow. Yielded to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. All right. In their lives. 
and not be under the influence of Satan and worldliness. The world wants to influence us. We cannot allow it. Listen to this main scripture we use to talk about uh, 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 being yielded to the Holy Spirit. Okay, Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. Mm -hmm. Leads to debauchery, in other words. But be filled with the Spirit. It really, in the Greek, is meaning be being filled. Yeah, Ongoingly, it's a continuous process. Be filled, be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, it mentions wine. Paul mentions wine because if you're under the influence of alcohol, mm -hmm. you are not under the influence of God. It's dictating your behavior. It's hampering your normal behavior. And he said, whether it's alcohol, whether it's worldliness, whether it's materialism, don't let anything else be the major influence in your life other than God. That is the idea. Mm -hmm. The point there is not to focus on alcohol, although it is included. But the point is, what are you allowing to influence your life mm -hmm. other than God? Wow. Other than the Holy Spirit. And you see, the thing about acknowledging his presence, I've been th thinking about this more and more. If every moment of every day I acknowledge the presence of God, that's going to change what I'm thinking. Absolutely. Okay, Lord, you know what I'm thinking, don't you? <laughs> and I did that today. I said, Lord, you know, in traffic, it wasn't altogether wonderful it, today. It wasn't God glorifying? Well, no, they weren't. I, I tried to be. <laughs> but I had a thought. I had, said, now, Lord, you know what I'm thinking about, what they just did. And Lord, that ain't right, so help me. I acknowledged God's presence in my car and did not think and did not say out loud things I used to say out loud. Well, you have a helper. He's we helped. talked about him earlier being the comforter yes. while we wait. Right. But he's also the Helper, he'll put in that stopgap. He'll tell you. Restraint. Hold back. Restraint. Restraint. Who are you acting like now? So, so he influences serving? you. He influences you to be quiet. He influences you to speak. Yes. Fantastic. And, and Pastor, maybe I interjected here last time. Yes. Or one of the times, <laughs> I said to the viewing audience that Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Yes when he was on the earth doing his ministry. Yes. And it is listed that way in scripture. Yes, full of the so Holy Ghost. In Luke 4, 1, it says, Go. Jesus, Come on. full of the Holy Spirit, returned after his baptism. Right. He returned from the Jordan and was led around. Full. By the Spirit. Come on. In the wilderness. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. The Bible tells us, be being filled. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was just full. <laughs> he was full. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, practically, he was totally under the influence mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. He did nothing mm -hmm. outside of the influence. of the Holy. When he spoke, it was by the Holy Spirit. When he didn't speak, when they were beating him, it was by the Holy Spirit. Yes. He was restrained and compelled mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Full. Mm -hmm. Totally controlled. That's what I see. Yeah, and, and he did That's, his miracles and, and everything. So you need to look at him carefully because we're supposed to be being like him. I mean, the idea, though, of being full, that means at some point we should want to get to the point where every th thought we have, every behavior we have, and every word we speak is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's hard. But and I, was, and, and, and you will nobody else will be perfect, but if we strive for that, we'll definitely be better than we are. Absolutely. Jesus was totally yielded. Totally. That's, that's why he can be the only one that can wear the banner without sin. Amen. <laughs> so we've got so much to say. We're going to have Let's other lessons. We've got to move on. Lord knows we're running out of time. <laughs> Where are we? Okay, we're down here now about how we get yielded. <laughs> yeah, we we should ask him. him, Holy Spirit, help me. We should ask him. I'm asking him to help me right now get through this lesson. We should ask him, and we should allow him to guide our thoughts as well as our actions. That's where I am, and that's why I restrain myself in traffic today with my thinking. Okay. Here's what the Bible says in Psalms 19 and 14, and then, Minister, I want you to take, to take it from here. Okay. It, it, uh, the psalmist wrote, let the words of my mouth, what I say, mm -hmm. and the meditation of my heart, what I'm thinking and feeling mm -hmm. inside, mm -hmm. be acceptable in your sight. That's a heavy request. Yes. My, oh Lord, you, 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 you're the ruler. I'm supposed to, I want you to rule my thoughts and my heart. My rock and my redeemer. Since you saved me, you got a right to have me 
yield my thoughts and my behavior to you. Yeah. Minister, take it from there. Okay. Pastor, I'm going to skip to the writers. Okay. The writers of the Holy Scriptures wrote okay. as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Wow. 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21, and I'm going to read the English Standard Version. Yes, ma'am. It says, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture mm -hmm. comes from someone's own interpretation. Yes. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. Right. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by wow. the Holy Spirit. Wow, under the influence. Under the influence. Their work was under the influence of the Holy Spirit as they were writing the scriptures. So that's and what it means when it says the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Yes, the Spirit was, has always been active. Remember, mm -hmm. he's eternal. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Yes. I'm under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy, oh my goodness. And the Holy Spirit was their <laughs> creation. Yes, yes, yes. Hovering, so, over the, hovering over the waters. Yes. Waiting for Jesus to come out and do his creation as, as it was the power and Jesus was the creative force. We don't right. get it. Well, that's some heavy theology there. Go on, Mrs. Holmes. We, we, we need to keep going. We're going to get into some deep water here. <laughs> the Holy Spirit <laughs> empowers believers to live. Come on. As God would have them to live and right. to do the work that, the for, that he for ordained them to do. Wow. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Right. Uh, Minister Gwen, I, I want to go back up and, okay. and I want to mention King David. I love him so much. Okay. You know, Psalms 23 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Okay. We spent about six weeks teaching that those six verses. So oh. I, 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 want to, I want to say something David said. Okay. King David of Israel said this. God, by his Holy Spirit, will lead us on paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And those are the only paths we ought to be walking on. Mm -hmm. we, we get off the path, he leads us right back to the paths of righteousness. Thank God for the Holy Spirit leading us to right living. Yes. Please continue, Minister. Okay. So... Uh, the Holy Spirit does lead us, and we are his workmanship, but we do have to yield to him. Come on. Uh, to, so that he can lead us. God never overpowers our will if we don't want to do what he says. Mm -hmm. If we want to rebel, then he'll leave you in rebellion, and you also reap the consequences yes, of that yes, rebellion. So, moving on. After our faith yes. unto salvation, believers yes. are given living water that yes. flows from us. Wow. And I'm going to read John 7, yes. 37 through 39. Beautiful. It says, now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood mm. and cried out, mm -hmm. saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Yes. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, Come on. from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Yes. But this he spoke of the spirit ah, whom yes. those who believed in him were to receive. Uh -huh. For the spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Wait a minute, minister. Yeah. Once we get saved and get the Holy Spirit in us. Yes. Out of us then. Out of us. Will flow. Yes. What? Rivers. R not streams. Rivers. We got to talk about rivers now. What kind of river is this that's supposed to come out of me and, and bless thirsty folk? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just. Bless thirsty folk. <laughs> come on. All right. I'll go, go on to your next point. It's some good stuff. Okay. All right. So the living water. Uh -huh. is life-giving doctrine teach, teach. or teaching about Jesus, the Savior. Wait, wait, wait. Please, may mm -hmm. I? Mm -hmm. Don't run by that. Okay. Not that you were. Okay. May I please come in? Yes. I want to repeat it. The living water is life-giving doctrine, life-giving teaching. Out of us, mm -hmm. it flows, telling people about salvation through Jesus Christ, yes. which will bring them life. Mm -hmm. which will give them life. Yes. Jesus told the woman at the well, which you are about to read, mm -hmm. 
Yes. That if I give you this water, you'll never thirst never again. Never thirst again. Total satisfaction. The well of Jacob's, that, that well they had prized so much, you drink from that well, you're going to get thirsty again. But if you drink from Christ, it keeps on filling you. Yes. It keeps on satisfying you. Yes. The doctrine, the teaching of Jesus Christ, it flows out of us to people. If they accept Christ and embrace him, they will have living water that will keep them from ever thirsting again. They will never be lost again, destitute again, lonely for what they should do in their life again. So much in there, Minister. Please go ahead. Right. I'm excited right. about this. Okay, so I'm reading from John, St. John, chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. Yes, ma'am. And it says, Jesus answered and said to her, this yes. was the Samaritan woman. At the well. At the well. Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. Come on. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. Mm. But the water that I will give him will become in him. Come on. A well. Come on. Of water Come on. springing up. Springing up. To eternal life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is just so magnificent. Yes, it is. Uh, because she had, Jesus asked this woman for water. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I will give you water. And she said, Well, how are you going to give me any water? This well is really deep. Tell the story, Minister. Come and on. you don't have a rope. Mm. You don't have a bucket. Mm. You don't have any means Come on. to give me any water. All right. And he said, you don't understand this water I'm going <laughs> to give to you. If you drink of this water, you will never need any of that well water mm. again Come on. in your life. Come on. And many of the things that have captured us Come on. in the world. Come on. When you accept Jesus Christ and understand yes. the power yes. of this living water Come on. called the Holy Spirit, yes. you don't have the need for those things that don't satisfy you again. No matter what you get from the world, you get thirsty again. You get thirsty again. There's no lasting satisfaction from worldly pleasures and yeah. worldly water that's, using your That's why you keep doing it, and that's why the advertisers work so hard and spend so much Come on. to keep you dissatisfied. And in debt. Well, that will result. <laughs> <laughs> in debt, this will result. Trying to satisfy yourself when all you need is living water. Right. And with living water, you can be satisfied where you are knowing God's going to make a way. Yes, yes. That living water is... The essence of who God is and who Christ is in us. Yes. And, and we'll, it'll come out of us and bless other people. It'll flow from us. Absolutely bless It'll others. flow to our children. It'll flow to our neighbors. It'll mm -hmm. flow to our co-workers and bless them and give them life. Well, it would change the focus of your life. Amen. Amen. Minister, we have one more point. Okay. I'm going to make it. Okay. And we're a little over time, but I hope they will forgive us. Believers are to endeavor. That means work hard at Never quenching or suppressing or extinguishing the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Yes. Now, in the Pentecostal denomination I was in, don't quench the spirit. That means if you feel good, jump up and shout. And if somebody didn't shout <laughs> That's longer, right. That's what it if somebody meant. was trying not to shout, yeah. but trying to stay in their seat. Oh, no, you're quenching the spirit. That is not what that means. That is not what that means. I'm hitting the chair. Scholarship, got to study, <laughs> got to study, got to study. Quenching the spirit means yeah, not resisting. allowing him to lead you, mm -hmm. resisting him, rebelling, rebelling against mm -hmm. him, not following him. He's yeah. trying to pull you right and you're sitting there doing nothing or pulling the other way. Yeah. You're resisting him. You're suppressing him. You're trying to extinguish him while he's trying to light a fire under you. Quenching the spirit has nothing to do with phys physicality. Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with shouting. Exactly. It has to do with either yielding to him, being compelled by him, yes. or not. Yes. Quench not the Holy Spirit. I'm quoting from uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, and we'll leave you with that. Uh, uh, don't, do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit in your life. Follow him. Let him guide you. In summation. Amen. <laughs> being filled with or led by the Holy Spirit can only result from our being obedient, obedient to what God commands of us. Yes. 
That our necessity includes being obedient to what the scripture tells us. Mm -hmm. That our necessity includes being obedient when the Holy Spirit convicts us in our conscience. That's right. He is in there and he will convict you mm -hmm. and guide you. John, Jesus said that in St. John, chapters 14, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. All right? This is an ongoing struggle because we live in a depraved world with an it has a depraved society. Minister, you make the last point. Okay. This is an ongoing struggle because we are in this depraved world and depraved society, but we can accomplish being filled with or led by the Holy Spirit yes. only if we constantly yield to him. Constantly. Constantly, as we rely on God to strengthen us. All right. And that scripture we, we are told that in the scripture, yes. I can do all things Come on. through Christ or through him, which is Jesus Christ, yes. who strengthens me yes. to do what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. You have to yield your control. Wow. Some people like to be in control yes. of everything. And if they're not controlling it, they're not having it. But God should be in control and not us. Right. Minister, a great point to end on. Thank you all for joining us yes. for this study. We pray that it was a blessing to you. Please join us next time yes. as we begin a study of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Minister? Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.